Welcome to Trade Delicious's Bulls vs Bears, where the investing market meets gladiatorial combat in a battle for all bragging rights. Our contestants will be armed with a hefty $100,000 starting capital, a leverage one to 10, and be given a single electrifying hour to out-trade each other. Their weapon, real-time market data. Their battlefield, designated assets via the hosts. But be careful, traders. A maximum drawdown of $5,000 stands as a pitfall you cannot afford to tumble into. And remember, this is a game of wit and skill, of strategy and performance. There will be no copy trading and no EA is allowed. You must stand your own ground. And to our viewers, you are the arena crowd, watching every strategy unfold live, every decision that has consequences, and every moment bringing these traders closer to victory or defeat. This is not just a trading game. This is bulls versus bears. This is the thrill of the financial arena right here on Trade Delicious. Let the games begin. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Bulls vs Bears where we have two very ambitious contenders going to go head to head for 60 minutes in the trading arena. Of course, my name is Jordan. I am with Alex from the Fivers and we're also joined once again by Victor and a very warm welcome to first time Afshan who has agreed to take on this challenge which is not easy and boy are we looking forward to it. How are we feeling about it gentlemen? Yeah, good. Just a little bit nervous. He's really a little fun. bit nervous. I think that's fine. Victor, Victor felt the same last week, and then he ended up with two percent profit in an hour. So it's all right to be a, a little bit nervous, you know. Victor, how's it feel to be back? Um, I love it. Let's go. <laughs> I'm ready. Um, I, I'm excited. I'm nervous as well. Um. So Victor, yeah, I, is, like it. I thought uh, I think it's not your first time. Um, not, no, not last time. First time. No, he won last time out. You are experienced then. Then I should be <laughs> afraid of you. <laughs> uh, everyone loves an underdog story, right? We love the underdog story, but Victor, All Victor's right. a good trader. So do your best. Don't look at his PL. Let's, get straight in look your own. Let's not waste any more time, guys. Sixty yeah, Marty, seconds begins now. You are free to trade as you will. I'm going to go straight over to having a look at the Victor here because I'm intrigued to know whether he's going to be patient or whether he's going to pull the trigger off the bat. And being back a second time, we know it's a little bit different. How are you thinking, Victor? Um, I have no idea. I don't have any setups yet. Um, I will be um, maybe not as aggressive as last time. Mm, interesting. Um, but um, depending on Ashwan, and I wish you all the best, Ashwan. Yeah, same um, from my side. <laughs> we'll see. Um, I like a bit of competition, so it's uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. But I'm I'm ready. I don't yeah. know. I would never have picked that you like a bit of a competition there, Victor. The, the, yeah, <laughs> I would never have guessed. I think really. Uh, <laughs> I'm surprised you're not looking at euro dollar though to be fair Victor because you're normally a euro dollar trader aren't you you trade euro dollar all the time you're not I looking am. on anything on that I am but um actually I'm not looking at that uh terminal so that terminal mm. is just something that I had open mm -hmm. uh, previously so it has nothing to do with my current uh, setup I'm looking at interesting Interesting. And what about you, Afshan? How are you feeling? Are you looking at oh, pulling an order? Look at this. No, I'm just looking because I have not gone through the desktop version of MT5. I have trade through mobile apps. Right? Ah, mm -hmm. so you normally trade through mobile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I'm just looking at all the stuff. How, mobile how trader. Work, how things work. Yeah, wow. I, I've never traded through mobile. Maybe I'm missing something. Is it? Is it the, the trade, trade was on trade? mobile? I think it's convenient to trade through mobile because you can uh, like uh, see all the things trading your chart and all that when you are not at home mm, it's a shame that's i'm it. always that's in the office <laughs> 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 i don't leave my office i probably just stay in front of the computer 
I get it. I get it. When I started trading remotely, though, I went out and bought extra monitors for my laptop. So <laughs> I, oh, I don't dude. reckon I'd be able to perform. Yeah, I don't reckon I'd be able to trade off of a phone. I, I, I commend it. Uh, Did I you get, you I, get I sold on that Instagram ad where it's got one laptop there and it flicks out into like two and three screens? I did, did you not. get sold on that No, ad? unfortunately yeah. not. Unfortunately. No, no. It's just a, a little, an extra display monitor. Um, actually, yeah. I, I'm pretty impressed with it, but I'm not going to go into that. It's <laughs> Yeah, we'll um, doing, no, doing but yeah, trading from your phone. So, how do you find how do you find trading from your phone, Afshan? Do you do you are you able to conduct your analysis in a, a normal way or the same way you usually would? Uh, no, just, I in phone I just uh, look out the where the market is heading. Like, uh, should I book my partials or not, and what's going on right now? If I'm not at home, rest analysis I do at home you know, on my laptop. Mm. Right. Okay. You just really execute on your phone and then obviously yeah, analysis. Yeah, yeah. analysis yeah, yeah, I just execute. Like, for example, if I have to take in the uh, take profit one or two, like if I have to trail my stop loss, all that stuff I just do on phone. Yeah. It looks like you were okay. taking some notes there, Victor. Just yeah. I beg your pardon? We're sitting heads. We're, we're trading the long game here. We're, I like we're it. No, game. do you know what? That's interesting because I think... You know, nobody's being so like aggressive. It's quite interesting. No one wants to that. play their hand. A little bit slower than usual. Yeah, a little, a little, bit, yeah, a little bit different to what we're used to. No one wants to show their hand first off. It's kind of like a. <laughs> Victor, Victor's in the zone, right? He's concentrating, but he's playing poker over here. Um, well, Afshan, I think you. Well, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know if you can hear me right now, but I'm assuming you're just having a look, waiting for an opportunity. Uh, I'm just looking at my setup. Like, what I like. Nice. Sticking to his plan. That's what I love to hear, you know, and traders stick into their plan. And so you how's, normally, how's, how's your day been? How's my day been? Yeah, how's your day My day's been a good I tell you, it was, my, it was my birthday the other day. I am it was. 27 years old. It's getting old. Happy I birthday, know. still. Thank you very much. Yeah. So, um, that was good. That was good fun. I'm also trading euro dollar long at the moment. So we'll see what happens with that. And that is it. What about yours, Jordan? How's everything been with you? Oh, it's been beautiful. It's been it's beautiful. beautiful. <laughs> Who wouldn't love being a part of Trade Delicious? Hey? Uh, actually, no. Funny enough, yesterday, and I'll quickly just jump in and show you this just while we wait for these guys to pull a position. Yesterday, yeah. I had a horrid position on um Oof. on the live trading room oh Oof. have a look at Oof. this have a look at that Oof. oh mate <laughs> yeah yeah that sucks i was so patient waited 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 and uh yeah wasn't meant to be so that, that's what i experienced yesterday that is uh typical <laughs> actually it is typical pretty standard happen. pretty standard yeah yeah oh. And that was in the live oh. trading room. When were you, when did, when's your live trading room for Trade Delicious? Uh, we do the live trading room every Wednesday. Uh, that might be bumped up a little bit more often depending on demand for it. I know a lot of people love those live trading rooms. Um, but yeah, no, we do we do live trading every Wednesday on Trade Delicious. A Asian session? No, no, a London session. London session, yeah. I got yeah, I know, I know. You, man. Let me jump in. I want to jump in. I'll watch you trade and we can just uh, have a chit chat oh. while, uh, while you're trading. You're in next oh. week. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that's it. <laughs> yeah, okay. Didn't even check my diary, but yeah, I'm fine. Done. We've made it. Happen. Oh, no, happy days. Yeah, no, it's, it's a bit different than what I'm used to uh, trading in the Asian session, but uh, uh, trading in the, the London session, a bit more yeah. volatility in there, but the setup's they tend to trade pretty much the same and you get some whipsaw movements in the London session, which yeah. I like to fade. So, um, and mm. Ruben and I, we look for the exact same setups. We do it in a different way. But when yeah. I, like, for example, I looked at Aussie dollar Japanese yen last Wednesday with Ruben. Yeah. And I just literally said the chart and he looked at it and went, oh yes, he ended up executing a position on it. Like we look for the exact same mm. thing. So if he finds opportunity in London, I'm sure I will. So you're fading it back to like the the mean or back to like the not yeah I, I don't go as far you, or as aggressive as what he does. Profile, no. 
Yeah, correct. Mm. So like the, yeah, right. the the middle of the range where the most of the prize actions, that's where you're kind of taking your profit. Kind of. Where, where we see the, the volume pumps, where we see the... So not so much... I'm not looking at median or, or anything like that. Nine yeah. times out of 10, it's a quick scalp. I'm just looking for kind of pullbacks where I think yeah. uh, the analogy I used to explain to Aaron was... It's just run a marathon. Look for a chart that's run a marathon. That last 200 meters, it's a neck and neck race. He's going to do a 200 meter sprint. Once he crosses that line, he's going to collapse. Uh, I'm looking for that collapse. That was a great analogy. That was fantastic. <laughs> oh, wow. I, I can see that. So you like just taking that little bit off the top. That's you in and out. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. So, so a lot of my positions, a lot of my positions um, are aren't very big i'm not looking to to change it completely if i get a little pullback 10 12 pips i'll still walk away with profit um so i'm, I'm happy with that sometimes i go in i catch a 50 pip move and it's great uh yeah. but i trade as if i don't know if i've got a, a reversal or a pullback so i just trade on on essentially getting in at that pullback nice and do you wait for any kind of confirmation for a candles like stick pattern or do you wait for like a uh like a test of like support or resistance like a double top or double bottom or anything like that or you're just like no. okay this is definitely overbought oversold or that's it i'm taking it short uh, essentially I, I look for some some clearly defined bots uh in in volume and in past where i think it will struggle to really get through uh if it's going to get through that level then i want to be out of that position either way so i'm not waiting around for any type of confirmation or, or any push to down so i'm trading on the one minute chart it's a quick yep. scalp if i'm going to get that bounce if i wait for a confirmation that bounce is done by the time i'm getting in so i'm very preactive but if it goes against me i've got the option to either scale out very quickly or hedge uh depending on the setup if i've got a couple of areas i'll just look to hedge and and hold it through those areas and, and see if we can come back down. Uh, if it's a spot like Euro yesterday, I'd just be like, no, nah, I'm out. Unfortunately, yeah. it didn't work out for me, right? But only FX, Victor, sorry, Jordan, only FX. I just saw his comment, only FX today. That's the <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not very good when I guess are the ones that have to message us to get our attention, yeah. is it? <laughs> I like, it's good that Victor asks though, you know, suddenly we turn the screen and SMP 500, I don't know, or he's going into the uh, footy and you've got a trade. My eyes might deceive me. We're in, <gasps> we're operational. Gold, we go. the big shiny commodity has gotten the attention of Afshan. What are you looking for? Are we allowed uh, to, to do gold? Of course. Uh, well, yeah, it's cool. Oh. Ooh. Yeah, that's a good yeah. point. Ooh. I'm just like thinking, it's like it's technically a commodity. It is. Because I, I wanted, I wanted to to trade gold. That's why I ask if if I if if I, I don't mind. Go go trade gold. You can trade gold. It you can trade gold. It is, right. You know, it's uh, it's uh, it's happened. So go for it, Victor. If you, think <laughs> you can go for it. Apologies. Yeah, I didn't think of that. I, it just yeah, it like, like, slipped my mind there. I was like, oh, it's a big shiny metal. I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, I think I think it gets confusing as well because forex, you know, obviously currency trading and stuff, but it includes, you know, everybody trades gold and silver and stuff like that. Even though it is the commodity, it kind of classes it. Everybody trades trades those in the forex industry anyway. I tell you what, I've been playing around with equities since speaking with Mickey. You know, that's another beast on its own. You know, it's like you've got a, it's just totally different strategies altogether. Um, yeah. I, uh, I, I played with equities for about six months, uh, maybe four years ago. Uh, mm. The only reason I stopped was because the US market opens at midnight here. Um, so I yeah. was working till donkey's hours, uh, yeah. which I didn't enjoy. But I did, in, I loved being a part of the, the equity market. I really did. And uh, I know Aaron's starting to experiment in the equity market now as well. And it's just got me, I might be doing a, a little bit of a move in the near future. We'll, we'll see what happens. That gets me a little bit closer to that time zone. So who knows? Equities might be on the cards. Wow. Yeah. Look, getting waiting for the active session. I don't really want to be waiting for the active session, you know, got stuff to do and, and things like that. But that's why I like crypto because they move the same. They move very similar. They're very trendy. 
sometimes you know at the moment when we're in a bear market it's very 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 choppy and you can be in ranges for days or even weeks um there you go um gonna have to close that again if you want to uh, close that after there it is 58 dollars banked well 54 post uh, commissions Thanks for Afshan. So we're officially green. Now the now the stress starts piling on. Victor's pulled the trigger straight away. Here we go. The floodgates wow. are open. I've got to say. Floodgates are open. I've got to say, look at them spreads. Actually, well, the, spreads, <laughs> the spreads are not in order, but I reckon if Victor pressed the spread button at the top of his market watch, we would definitely see some fantastic spreads. Victor's going to do what he did last week and say, Alex, stop talking. Uh, I've got trading to do. <laughs> That's it. And All it's right, interesting on gold, on gold, you guys are taking a little bit more of a less less volume, not, not going too big. Last week, everybody was going 10, 10 lots in. So gold's a different beast, though. I don't really trade gold. I haven't traded gold before. It's, it's something I want to touch on. We'll start with you, Victor. What's the attraction to gold for you? Why, why do you like trading the asset? Well, um, I don't have any preference on gold, to be honest. I just trade whichever pair uh, shows my setup. Nice. So I, I might as well trade the pound dollar, the cat Swiss, cat yen, just as well as I trade gold. In brief, what would you say if like to a total newbie and to say it in the most simplest way, in brief, how do you trade? That's a good question. Um, <laughs> if I would say it in a few sentences, it is, yeah. I'm looking for um, a reversal pattern Mm -hmm. and I try to get in at the best risk reward ratio before it reverts so when as soon as you start seeing a price reverse then you're taking the trade to... no 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 I I wait for a specific pattern yep and as it triggers then I go in um but the pattern and my strategy already um, is telling me that I'm either going to be right right away or I'm going to be wrong. And I'm usually a lot wrong. Yeah. But those times that I'm, I'm right, uh, it makes up for the rest. But you have quite small stop losses normally because we spoke about it in your last in the last episode is you quite have quite a tight stop. But that's why when you get those big winners, you, you make up for everything. That is correct. Got you. I, I've always found in trading, and especially in my own trading, when I talk to people, that it helps if you can define your trading strategy and explain it to a five-year-old, right? That, that's what I've always been told as well. You explain yeah. your strategy to a five-year-old. Um, I think it, it's so paramount. I struggled with it early on. I was like, how can I explain every single thing that I was doing? to a five-year-old and then as you go on you realize oh it's not that complex <laughs> it's, yeah. it's are you able alex even if it's in your crypto are you able to explain what you do to a five-year-old when when i say price continuation i hope the five-year-old has got that <laughs> no so i look at i look at price i look at something an asset that is going up or down specifically in intraday trades in intraday trend a five-year-old is never going to know these words but an intraday trend and then i get in on pullbacks to a trend continuation so that's what i've done on euro dollar right now i've actually just got out of the position um obviously yesterday it pushed up it's pulled back and then i've just got in on that little pullback with a help of a fib and just taking it up to the uh, last swing high so that is just the basic bread and butter setup for me. I played with Ruben's ideas about uh, trying to fade certain moves like the one I'm talking about. And I've just got my ass handed to me every single time. So I'm just going to stick to the stuff that I know. <laughs> I can't it's trade like Ruben. 
I can't trade like Rui then. Yeah, Euro is actually in a really interesting spot for a potential fade. I'm, I'm having a look at that, but um, See, no, it's tough to do. I'll... I would, I would never think about fading it. Like for me, I haven't got the, the, the I haven't got. I've got it in me. <laughs> All you have <laughs> to do is fade, fade a move that just looks. It looks. It looks strong. So. But Ruben yeah. and yourself clearly have got that that part of them to, to that's trade. That's stupidity. Like that. yeah, but it also takes a lot of uh, guts to trade like that. And you have to hold your nerve. Like, I don't like going into a lot of drawdown, unfortunately. And normally mm. when you do fades with certain, like, strong movements, you tend to see you're never going to get into the, the place that you exactly want. Um, and you tend to be in a little bit more drawdown for a lot longer especially if you're on a bigger time frame if you're on the one minute then obviously you can pinpoint certain areas especially if you've got levels on the chart but if you are like a four hour or and you're you get in at a level then you're in drawdown for so long you could even go back go into profit and then the day after you're looking at your chart and you're in drawdown again i would not be able to 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 think about it like that i need to be in and out so that's good. No, I'm gonna. We'll have to challenge your process a little bit. All right, Ooh. let's jump back in. You, you've got four positions here selling on gold, Victor. We're we're down a little bit of a drawdown, about hundred and eighty-five dollars. Actually, about the same drawdown that Afshan's feeling uh, in US dollar, Japanese yen, and euro. Obviously, he banked that fifty-four dollars before, so he's a little bit in the lead. What's your? Uh, what are you having a look at here, Afshan? What's yelling out that for you to trade these pairs? Uh, so actually, I am looking at, uh, for example, <laughs> I'm trading US uh, Japanese yen. Uh, mm -hmm. It's in downward in smaller time frame. It is in downward direction, in downtrend. So after it retested the trend line, I just took the trade. And my stop loss is above the resist uh, resistance which is faced uh, earlier. Right. Okay. So it's very yeah. similar to to maybe the way you explained it alex with continuing with the trend a bit of a pullback going yeah, that yeah, direction pullback, and then yeah, looking it, 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 get back when in. it did a pullback i just uh, took the trade okay yeah taking the trade that you were thinking about taking on the on the euro about fade, fading that movement up that's what it looks like i've got on the charts as well because i'm in the trading room this is the fivers trading room and I've got Ruben's charts up and all I can see is, you know, these Bollinger bands and stochastics. I'm trying to, I don't know, man, like, like, do they work? I don't know. Like I'm looking at, it's at the top now of the Bollinger band and Ruben said, when it's always at the top of the Bollinger band, you know, you gotta, you gotta sell it or something like that. And I'm like, Oh, do I really, do I really want to get into a position there? To know. Interesting how yeah, people look, trade, you know, such difference. Yes. Yeah. It's process. We've all got the exact same data, give or take. Yeah. What brokerage you're at, or or anything. We're all the same thing. And those indicators and everything we use. Guess what? They're based off of those candles. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> everyone coming up with these different ideas on what works and what doesn't. Yeah. So well, let me go on. You for, for... Naked chart, a naked chart, or with indicators. Indicators. Interesting. Why? Uh, indicators will give me more understanding. It's, it's like an Excel sheet you. of all the data you need mm. or graphs to show you that data better, <laughs> right? Yeah. So I could go with this Excel spreadsheet and have all of the numbers, but my brain's not going to take all that in. I need it visually presented. Uh, yeah. in a certain way that highlights what I want to see. And that's yeah. what the, the volume indicators for me do. Yeah, I can fair play. 100%. I'm big on analogies, if you can't tell. <laughs> oh, I love analogies as well. No, definitely. I like uh, I do like EMAs, especially when price crosses an EMA and retests it. And most, most of the time, because a lot of people and a lot of, I wouldn't say funds, I don't know what funds do, but... A lot of people use EMAs as well to, to code bots, you know. So you tend to see kind of nice reactions to certain types of EMAs, you know, and I like using them. So that's the only indicator that I'll probably use. But I feel like every time I put on, like, I don't know, a, uh, a stochastics or anything like an RSI and I look for, like, 
divergences and stuff like that i always get in way too early and always get busted so clean clean charts for me 100%. i think it, it's it's all always with indicators they are a piece of the puzzle right yeah you, they are that they're not something you make a decision because of mm. they're, they're a piece of the puzzle you make the decision because of what price is doing and what it's telling you to do this just will give you just that little bit of an extra piece to understand you don't want to you don't want to you know if you get a moving average crossover that's not a trigger to buy uh yeah. that's just telling you that hey price has gone up here that the average price is now above that price that's all it is yeah. um i've not been a i've never really been a big fan of moving averages i know mm. a lot of uh prop firm head like proper in-house hedge funds in sydney uh mm -hmm. that will do all their asx trading all their crypto trading actually i'll have to introduce you to to one anthony uh who left his hedge fund desk up at prop x and went to launch a new crypto project which is doing really well for himself i have to uh, wow. crypto um, project is an exchange or an actual project like a token no no, no like uh he, he trades it uh mm. so it's him it's a there's a group of them I'll, I'll introduce you to them one day um yeah, he, he's one of the best traders i know and he, he helped me early days for me and um yeah. but he does everything through moving averages and mm. I, I can't stand him i i've never I, I in equities i'll use them like in an investment term like if i'm mm. looking some long term but in terms yeah. of day trading I, I wouldn't touch him with a 10-foot pole he what about the app have you ever used you've used the v, v app before I did when I when I traded. Uh, I do when I trade indices. Yeah. Uh, if I'm having a look at the issue with VWAP and indices, can't do it on, uh, for, yeah. can't do it on forex anyway. VWAP on forex is on, I'm getting yeah, volume. No. Yeah. Yeah. So um, well, I do it with indices and only obviously in, in when it's actually open, not the future. Because mm. if you're looking at the futures, I mean, by the time the US indice is open, it's been trading since 9 a.m. my time. Um, yeah. so the VWAP is, is already a straight line. It's not going anywhere. So you yeah. got to take that into account. But, um, if, if I'm trading like the, the ASX 200, yeah, I'll use VWAP. Mm, interesting. We're seeing a little bit of drawdown here. I think we're seeing a little bit of drawdown with both traders. Mm. Oh no, you, you banked some profit here, Victor. Yeah. Yeah. I can see gone back to FX, gone back to currencies. Uh, yes, I actually um, I saw something on the smaller time frame, but um, I well, actually, I'm seeing another setup on gold. Um, but I I think I am on the wrong side of the market with gold, so yeah. that's why I I got out. Um, but. Yeah. Um, because I, I I wasn't looking at other pairs and I'm and I see uh, euro dollar um, um, having an impulse uh, a bullish impulse so I I might I might be on the I might have been on the wrong side. So that that's good though. So you know you're 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 you may be on the the wrong side, but you're managing. Are you managing out of this trade? Are you still thinking about holding it? What's your thought process? thought process now because you're in a trade that you're potentially on the wrong side side of i was actually talking about the, the on gold yeah about gold but this aussie I dollar is out, the yeah, same out on gold sorry yeah I yeah uh, but uh the aussie dollar is the same thing i uh i took my loss right there that's fine um actually the um, um, um uh, what i said applies to both of them so yeah um but i still am looking for a <clears throat> a setup in aussie dollar mm -hmm. um even though there it is um it looks to be counter trend right now counter the the impulse mm -hmm. how many traders do you reckon are looking at the exact same place retail traders and looking to sell right now i beg your pardon I reckon a lot of us, a lot of retail traders will be looking at that chart and be like, sell, 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 sell. And my thought process would be that is the perfect, yeah, perfect time for people to get caught off on the wrong side, especially if it's very bullish and very uh, volatile to the upside. So, it is, it is. But I'm looking at something specific. Um, mm -hmm. So 
it's not that I'm I like I want to just go against the market just because. Nice. Um, it's more yeah that I more methodical. I, yes, I, I have a reason why I'm, I'm I'm going against it, and I'm fine to go against the market if my if my method tells me that that's what I need to do. Love it, sick. So um, actually, I I've seen it so many times that the market moves quickly in one direction mm -hmm. um and and it and it, it seems like convincingly it's gonna break and go on but in the end usually more often than not it respects the structure um so i i just followed my structure and i let the market tell me what it wants to do um by by the structure it creates mm -hmm. um in the market and actually right now my indicator is not working so i can't i can't get in uh, on the uh on this fixed dollar risk that i always do i don't know why is this your this is your uh, risk management tool yeah but so i don't know what it is and i don't have a lot of time to figure it, it out right now but it's not working in this pair so i i'm uh, i'm a bit um uh, i'm not sure how much risk i know more or less but it's still i'm, I'm i it tells me here 1.66 and i'm doing two at each time so i know I'm, I'm about um uh let me see that's about 30 percent more so i'm right now i'm doing uh 3.6 uh 0.36 uh, percent uh, risk mm -hmm. i can calculate it but i th that's not how i usually do it. i i don't like to be distracted yeah. with 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 those uh, matrix while i'm trying to read the, the structure yeah no definitely and you like to see if if price is going into a level do you like to see it going into a level fast or do you like to see it drift into a level because i i personally prefer to see price go into a level really fast if i'm looking to to fade it or if i'm looking to take the continuation let's say if it's pulling back into uh, a fib level or a certain level is doing that really fast then i'm more happy to go into it than if it drifts in and slowly starts hitting that level if it slowly starts hitting that level for me i'm like mm, maybe i gotta think a little bit twice before i uh, jump in with full clip but what about for you when you're looking at price actually um there is something to say about the speed of course um my structures the structures i look at um, they tend to fail um, when there's a lot of impulse against it. So because, of course, not all structures, they, they don't work all the time. Mm -hmm. um, so and those times that they don't work, um, a lot of time it, it, it's the speed how market is going against it. Apparently, there is some higher time frame um, impulse that is not going to stop with my structure um, with the time frame I, I see my structure in. Yeah. Um, but mm, I I would I try to take the the trade the setup all the time, even if it's slow or or fast. I don't have um, statistics on telling me that mm, how to measure that speed. I, I haven't thought about it and i haven't yep. uh come up with uh with a with a way to to um identify the speed objectively and then do some back testing to see what is my cutoff value and such stuff like that so i i don't i don't do it but i'm, I'm sure there there might be some edge there as well what i've seen is that mm, my structure yep. um what i do is i just um if the market is going to reverse it will do certain things more often than not and as long as it's doing that i'm i i will go in i'll put the trigger even though i i think it's not going to work a lot of times i think the the setup is not going to work but that's not my job my job is just to follow my rules and pull the trigger wait for the moment don't pull it too uh when i'm impatient and under stress or my personal life affects me usually i get impatient and start you know uh, getting in the trade uh, hoping that i'm early 
but not mm -hmm. waiting for the actual uh, criteria to enter. And usually that means that mm, I, I'm training something that is not my method and that's not my job. So the only thing, my only job is to follow my rules and yep. whatever happens will happen. Profit or loss is, is, is not the goal. The goal is the process. When you see yourself breaking your rules or you so see yourself not doing what you're supposed to doing, what do you do? Because I know a lot of people, a lot of traders that will keep trading. What do you do to I, get yourself out of that pattern or what do you do to stop yourself, uh, you know, to get back on track? I'm still struggling with that, to be honest. And I don't think I've overcome it or, or that um, I'm immune um for it mm -hmm. so what i what i do is i try to start with the right foot from the beginning of the day and i say yeah. i not i will not allow myself to go to trade without uh outside my 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 rules mm -hmm. and and once i do it i start right i tend to um maintain that easily uh and once i drift away it's very difficult for me to get in because you, yeah. you i get aggressive um and not physically <laughs> i mean <laughs> you know <that. laughs> i'm thinking, I'm thinking get a little bit aggressive when they start going off to be honest you know you get emotional you got re into revenge trading and then you, you start you know, taking trades just because it offers you an insane risk reward, mm -hmm. um, but it's not really the, the 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 trade you're supposed to take. Yeah. And I I don't have a, a good way to do it. One um, one of the ways I try to do it is I I plan my my entries um, in advance, and I know per setup, how many bullets I have. And I keep track of those bullets, um, but that is dependent on me adhering to my own rules. And that usually doesn't work when you're emotional. So yeah. what I, I uh, a good friend of mine uh, recommended me is to have um, your capital be your ultimate stop loss. So I have, let's say 20 bullets of capital in my account. Um, and that automatically um, stops me because yep. you have run out of capital. And um, you can do that with a, a prop firm uh, account, but you, I don't trade the, the, the accounts directly. So I, I can do it still. Yep. So I, I trade from a main account and I can control the balance on my main account. So um, I can put in 20 bullets from my main account and those are all the, the shots I have. That's, a, that's one idea that I've been uh, playing with. I tell people, and this is the way that I, whenever I've done, ever done a, a challenge here at the Fivers or ever trading, I would take the drawdown that I've got, the maximum drawdown. This is what I tell everybody take that and divide it into to 10 that gives you 10 bullets exactly the way that you're saying 10 bullets to trade with to make sure that you're obviously not over risking on any particular setup and i would use one to two bullets for for this uh example in uh in a trade and that's how i would i would do it and i would tell people in the prop industry especially if they're trading an evaluation divide it into 10 each one of those is your maximum risk per trade and then see where you get because it's a good it's a good way of doing it i like that way i agree what, what i you? do is sorry carry on victor um what i do is i i um uh, the thing is i don't know how many entries there will be on a setup so i need okay. to keep my my options open um and that's why i i risk uh hold on i gotta mark it can, is, I, can uh, I challenge this thought process here just a little bit it. 
go challenge it. Love it. I don't like it. <laughs> that's, a, that's a challenge that, that's not really a challenge that's just saying you don't like it give me give me the reason. <laughs> that's an opinion I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain why i don't like it right yeah, in, in yeah. theory it makes sense it makes yeah. sense but who's to say how the next 10 trades is going to play out all right uh we, we've got no idea no one's got any, any time you press buy or sell, you have no idea whether it's going to go up sideways, down, out of the mood. No one knows, right? It doesn't matter how good of an edge you have. It doesn't matter how good of a trader you are. No one knows which way that market's going to go. Um, yeah. And then when you limit yourself to that way of thinking, I think it, it, it can add a little bit of pressure. What I prefer to do, and, and this is what I talk to to people, and, and this is open for rebuttal, right? If, if you don't like this back, I, I ask you to come back to me. Um all of your drawdown statistics need to be confirmed prior to going through one of these challenges, uh, in my opinion, okay? So the way that you analyze your risk is based mm -hmm. off of your performance. If your performance over the past year, let's say, or, or maybe six months, however long you traded, or maybe it's back testing, I prefer forward testing, but um, if your performance says that you are prone to... 15% drawdowns or maybe you are prone or the longest ever losing streak you've had is 16, 17 trades. Then you base your risk of that five, six, 10%, whatever you have at the firm, you base that off of the statistics in which you've brought. So rather than having 10 yeah. bullets all the same, personally, I enter positions at different values. So depending on my confidence in the setup will determine how much risk I'm putting on. Yeah. Um, so my trades aren't just kind of like one bullet, two bullet, three bullet. It's it's a bit mess. But I think everyone should be more statistical in the way that they, they've got data. If they don't have yeah. data, get data, right? No one else is going to do it for you. Get the data. And that data will tell you exactly how much you should be risking so you don't lose that account. That's I just wanted to challenge that a little bit because that's how I feel and that's I can, how I do it. No, that's... Actually, I, I can agree with that 100% as well. I can agree with that 100% as well. The majority of people, and let me say this, maybe a pinch, you know, majority of people, unfortunately, don't have statistics. They don't have journals. And the majority of people that come into the prop firm, I can confirm, that I've been on so many calls with them and also you, Jordan. How many of them do have journals and how many, how many people do have statistics that they can say? I've had a year worth of trade uh, trading. I can tell you this is my expectancy or this is my drawdown per trade. So the way when I give somebody like that who hasn't got any kind of statistics or anything like that, they are trying, let's say, for the boot camp, the bullets or breaking it down into 10 is a safer way for them to go about their risk management when they haven't got a foundation of risk management to then, you know, going into a trade, you know, two lots, two lots with, uh, I don't know, 20 pip stop loss on account that has 5% drawdown, you know, something like that. So I agree. I agree. And I understand that from a beginner point of view, but if anyone come to me and said, well, I don't know what that is, I would tell them to go get it, <laughs> right? Because look, there's a million different ways we can play this angle. Um, yeah. I think statistics are, are the most important 100%. and to know whether or not you're, you're good enough to to pass said challenge or whether or not you should be, you know, practicing or, or whether you should already be a $4 million trader. These, your trading is going to tell you exactly that. And I think people should base their decisions off of that. But Victor, you wanted to challenge me? No, I, I don't want to. Actually, I agree completely. Um, the, the, the number of bullets and, and actually I, I will say this in another way, the, um, your backtesting or your stats on your performance um, should define um, your risk settings. So mm. your lot size and your entry risk uh, per uh, per entry. Um, but what um, um, Alex was saying is, how do you manage? How do you stop yourself from from revenge trading and going on tilt? And the, the bullet. Is a is a is a is a tool to the way to do it with bullets number of bullets is a way to stop yourself because it's it's very easy to say okay I had ten or I had twenty 
uh, shots and they didn't work. And it's it's mu much it's like a handbrake uh, method, but it should not be your uh, the basis of your method. Your method should be should already have told you how many loses you have in in a row. How, what's your drawdown and your risk setting should be based on that, nothing else. So I yeah. agree completely well with said. you. Yeah, it's it's that it's like differentiating what is a technique, and what is you know like techniques and edge and things like that. You got to determine what they are because obviously people have uh, strategies, which is a full trading plan with edge with everything, and then they have within that little techniques that help them. You know, so it's very different uh, ways of looking at it. Everybody has their own little techniques and things to, to help. Um, We've been perfectly distracted. There is 15 minutes left of trading. Wow. There's 15 okay, minutes? I've gone through the whole <laughs> yeah. 40 minutes there already. 15 minutes left of trading. I personally have been watching Euro absolutely send it uphill, which... Alex, yeah. it's screaming at me. I can't lie to you. This is screaming at me. We've got the oh, ECB out, man, financing but... rate in a couple of hours. Like, oof. I think this is going to ask for a fade. But let's check in with what our traders are doing. Has anyone caught this Euro move? Where are we trading? How are we looking at it? Let's have a look over at Afshan. Afshan, how are you feeling so far? Uh, I'm just saying that uh, Euro is uh, like it flew away very fast. It mm -hmm. didn't respect my uh, strategy at all. Flying yeah, away. It, been <laughs> it is flying away. It has the been dollar, which surprises me coming up to the main three the dollar, line index is going, right dollar index is going down and down. That's why the euro and euro and USD is flying away. Yeah, yeah, yeah a lot of dollar movement coming through. Yeah, uh, yeah. Victor, how are you doing? <laughs> Not good at all. Um, the uh, conversation was different, too, such a um... difference from last week. It's interesting. Ah, oh, he's gonna blame the conversation. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> no, no, no. It's 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 all about me. I take responsibility for for every action. No, but um, I I do like the conversation and and I participated a little bit more. And actually, my uh, my indicator, my uh, um, risk tool is not working at all. Uh, so that that is a bummer but that's okay um yeah what can i say how do i feel i feel great <laughs> this, i think these as well as being a competition the whole idea for this as well is to bring traders together so you talk about trading you know it's really mm -hmm. important as well because there's so much so much fluff so much other stuff and, and having traders some that are in different levels experiences different it gives a ways different of kind of exposure it gives, it gives a, a different kind of exposure to a person exactly mm -hmm. exactly it's a different That's, type of way way of looking at different types of people the way they trade and it is very trading is a kind of walk alone journey you have to walk alone no one no one is going to understand what are you doing every everyone consider it as a gambling and all that stuff they're saying oh, what are you doing all the, with your life go get a job don't do these all these things so people uh, person get demotivated after that but uh, after uh, all these <clears throat> uh, attending these things we get a little bit motivated and all that stuff yeah, yeah. exactly and that's one of the reasons we're building trade delicious here as well is is so it yeah. is a, i went the retail <laughs> route right i went yeah. the the lonely that everyone else is like what on earth are you doing uh and then i look back and go honestly i don't know <laughs> but <laughs> it's it's all about kind of learning and, and growing as a group and having a bit of a laugh about it as well and, that, and that's why we bought trade delicious so we can do that yeah retail traders no retail traders you know that's uh you know it's a lonely thing retail trading at least when you go into a firm you've got a desk with people on it people always having a joke and people you know it's a working environment when you're retail trading and people around you don't know what it's like to be a retail trader or don't know what trading is um then they obviously have different kind of assumptions that aren't exactly true and that's why i think a community like trade delicious like a community we have with the fibers where you're in a place where people understand the journey you're going through or understand the pressures you come where you're in profits and you know it's it's, it's a high pressured uh, environment or if you're in drawdown you know and it's very uh, it's very good to have that community around you here we go 
Here we go. Let's Money go. talks time, yeah, isn't it? This is coming there. down to neck and neck. We're going in to the final 12 minutes here. And uh, this is where it all matters. It's all about outperforming the other trader. If you're both in drawdowns, it looks like you both are. It's all about who loses less money, essentially, uh, to proceed much. to that next round. Alex, who's your money on? I can't say. You know what? I'm not, not going to say anymore because it is so always so close and it's so interesting. It literally can happen. It can change all in, in like this, a, a minute. I remember Saul in, in our first episode, he was in a great position. Soon as we stopped the stream, you know, he, he actually yeah. lost. But as soon as he stopped the stream, it went in his favor and he would have won. Like, he would have. I, I, I think, it. yeah, you can emphasize as soon as we stopped. Like, soon literally, we said stop trading button, about a minute later, it, it dumped. dumped. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. It is uh, it is one of those things. But one uh, one thing I want to ask you, Jordan, is if a trader hasn't got those statistics, he's new to trading. Where do you, does he forward test on a demo account? Does he put a hundred dollars in a live account and risk a dollar per trade? Like, what does he what does he do? How does he get those statistics? And you know, is he does he have to? Yeah. How does he get those statistics? What, what's his plan? Does he do a prompt firm? Does he what? It's a good question. Um, and it's I've always struggled with brand new beginners. Uh, when when I have someone be like, oh, what's this you do? Like what? what it, I find it so difficult to really develop a roadmap because they still need to learn whether or not this is right for them. Uh, and they still need to go through the ups and downs in which we all did as traders, in my opinion. Uh, yeah. So it's always tough. Now, when I was starting trading, I didn't know what a prop firm was. Uh, I didn't know about all the, the different options that you could go through. And um, so I went straight onto a, a demo account, played around and then went real. But it was through random brokers. Building statistics is something you need to do once you're consistent. Keep in mind, I am not saying consistently profitable. I am not expecting you. I would be pleasantly surprised if you managed to just walk in here and you were consistently profitable. What I mean by consistent is consistent in your process, consistent mm -hmm. in the way you trade. You could lose money every single trade, but as long as the process you are doing is consistent, that's when you start getting statistics because then you can start getting on the ideas that you need to change, what the issue is, get yourself out of that vicious loop of I need a new strategy, right? I hate that loop. It, it really traps a lot of traders. Um, so uh, it doesn't matter. You can go to a prop firm account. You can go trade real. I think it should have some kind of skin in the game. I think it's important yeah. to have some kind of skin in the game, feel the losses when it hurts. Yeah. I've, felt plenty of losses over my time i'm sure you have as well alex I, i've felt some big ones which still haunt me <laughs> um which uh, put me out of the game for like two and a half weeks i, I couldn't even look at a chart mm. i wouldn't be the trader i am today if i hadn't felt that so i'm all for skin in the game feel the losses feel the pain and um understand that there is risk to what we're doing so yeah. I, i've always been a big advocate for that but yeah it do any type of trading, it doesn't matter. Paper trading, real trading, prop firm trading, just trade and be consistent to build those statistics. And then that that statistical book will tell you what you need to do. If that statistics yep. are telling you, hey, you don't make money, demo. Yep. Demo. Until you get that to a point you can. Oh, you're making money? Sweet. Let's go, let's go live or let's go prop firm. Oh, you're real making money now? Okay, let's go hedge fund. Mm -hmm. That's how I would look at it. I like the way uh, I like the way you look at it exactly, and it's it, I look at trading a little bit like a sport as well. So if like a, a competition sport, when you're trading, when you're training for a competition, you're doing certain drills specifically for that competition. It's like your strategy. You're drilling. You're drilling. You're drilling. You're drilling. You're seeing what you're 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 not doing correctly, and you change it up. You change the technique a little bit and then you carry on drilling that and then obviously your coach is watching you at the side which is a little bit like your journal and he's giving you the advice of what you can do from the side and that eventually gets you when you are at the competition and you feel like you're ready now to take on the competition that's when you shine yeah. and that's the and way i look at trading as well 
and, and same thing. If if you feel you need a coach or a coach is going to help you, get a coach. Just vet the coach. Don't get a coach because he drives a Ferrari, right? Uh, I think so many people just jump straight into that. Vet the coach or, or have an understanding on who you're going to invest your time in and vice versa, they're going to invest the time in you. Um, yeah. I think that's that's also very important. And yeah. they don't even have to be a profitable trader to be a coach. Uh, coaching and trading are two very different things. As long as they understand what's going on there, they can still help you. Even if it's someone you're trading with and you can do a, a buddy system type thing and yeah. hold each other coach. accountable, it helps yeah. a lot. Yeah. When I say coach, I was meaning your journal. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I know. I know. Oh, but, I'm, but I'm also okay. saying, but yeah. having someone like I, I've always found if a trader's come to me and they have the statistics in which I want to see, I can point out something that they wouldn't have even looked at that would relate mm. to, to something in their PL or, or their actions. Yeah. I'd be like, hang on, every time you've said this, this is what's resulted. Why? And then they'll be like, oh, wow. And, and same for me. If I, it's tough to do to give everyone all your, open yourself up like that. Um, but I've I've done it with uh, with uh, actually some real top trading coaches, and they've just sat there, looked at me, and gone, Jordan, are, you, are your eyes open? Like this is the most obvious. Thing. And I'll be like, oh, duh. Um, sometimes a, an extra person can help you do that. Anyway, I've noticed while we're chatting here, Alex, you lot see. size have picked up. Victor's pulling 20 lot and 10 lot positions in the market, trying to get out of this drawdown. Oof, it's on the line now. He's, he's in a good position. I like this position. This is a position that I would probably take as well. This is what, I, uh, what I would be looking but at. Is it going to be complete in six minutes? Uh, look, if it gets to his, his first take profit, yeah. Afshan, still trading on the one lot. We've got six minutes left here, Afshan. Does he send <laughs> it all Actually, all? I was about to take the 10 lots, but mistakenly I took one. I've actually done the opposite before. I've tried to take one lot and opened up 10 lots before. That was, and you know, as soon, as I, it, as, soon as I clicked it, as soon as I clicked it, it was on the one the minute chart. As soon as I clicked it, it went, went away and I was like, ah, oh, now I'm stuck. It is... A horrible position luckily it came back so what are we looking at? how close is it we're looking at about 99 flat and you're about 99 two this is close this is real close again this is coming down to the wire congratulations Victor. you are up ah not yet you got five minutes of trading left Safshan. i wouldn't be so uh willing to accept defeat the markets yeah, can do don't, anything don't, don't be that well we maybe we shouldn't say this is this bad jordan that we're saying you know don't it's be absolutely terrible but i think everyone yeah. at home knows that we're doing this for our entertainment purposes exactly this is the way you should actually I've, trade i've shown dig deep mate 100 percent. drop it all full clip <laughs> Other nothing. Our money's on the line. Have fun. <laughs> this is where it gets interesting, man. To see where everybody uh, gets up, oh, and euro dollar is still charging up, which is interesting. Victor has pulled the trigger. He's closed his positions. Interest. Interesting that you pulled uh, pulled the position here. To be fair. The thing is, um, we're not trading as we should. <laughs> yeah, no, 100%. 100%. Yeah. So um, one thing is I, I lost control of my risk because my indicator, which I rely on, is not working. So I, I'm not putting in, not losing time putting in the stop loss. But that's the cost of that is that I don't have the exact precise control of risk I normally have. So yeah. I, I can't just let it run and mm. and then calculate this, you know what my risk is supposed to be. And that's going to be too late. So at yeah. the first glitch, I, I have to pull the trigger. And that's what I did. And I'm, I, I'm very glad I did. Um, the other thing is, uh, with only six minutes to go, you have to think strategic, Ashwan. So 100%. 100%. <laughs> yeah, he's playing the game <laughs> again. <laughs> You uh, so no, I I goes up to play poker. Yeah, I do play poker. Uh, there you go. Traders love tell. poker. I love po everybody in the office loves poker. Trade traders love playing poker. All right, we're gonna need to do some kind of virtual poker event. Yeah, I was I was I was taking the Mickey out of Rubin last week. 
for po he's actually really good yeah he's actually really good i was taking a mickey saying i always take his money he's pretty pretty savvy when it comes to poker you know so we definitely should get a uh a poker game going that'd be interesting the don't other just, don't thing i, I, I didn't game. mention pardon go ahead jordan you want to say something Oh, no, I was just going to rip into how much we sound like gamblers right now. But you, you go ahead, Victor. No, gambling. Yeah. You can't say poker's gambling. You know, poker's trading. Yeah. You know, you got your probabilities, you know. I'm just trying to face the fact that I'm like a gambler. Totally fine, you know. Baccarat is also not gambling. You know, Baccarat has got a strategy. Yeah, yeah. neither is roulette. No, no, roulette, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Lots of strategy with roulette, you know. But it's all probabilities, you know. So. Sorry, Victor, go ahead. Um, With roulette, I think it's more gambling. I was joking. Because your odds are against yeah. you in roulette. And yeah. with, with blackjack, with, sorry, with poker, uh, your odds depends on the how good the others are. So if you're better, you 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 it's not gambling in that case. And you have a uh, how do you say a um, if you have a consistency, as you said, Jordan, uh, in in poker as well. That if if of, of course if you're going all in at every little card you have, little hand, then then it's gambling. But it's the same with trading. Trading can be uh, not gambling but it can be just as easy gambling. I mean, if you just, you can gamble with everything. It doesn't have to be trading or and anything money-wise. Money -wise. If you can, uh, gambling can have many forms. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to respect Afshan right here. He's not pulled the trigger. He's not just trying to dump the market last minute. Like I would be loading into like a $10 you know, million he's not going position. To the market maker strategy. I'd be, I'd be loading in. Yeah, I remember me uh, me and a friend, a friend and I, we went to, to play a little bit of poker. And as soon as we got onto the table, um, I was being a little bit more reserved. And then, you know, it was, it was not very good cards on the table. And suddenly he goes all in. Not all in, but he put at least like 30% of his chips in. I'm looking at him like, no way this guy's got anything, you know. This is the first hand. He's got nothing... So obviously uh, we went head to head and he didn't have anything. And it's just like that in trading, you know, somebody gets a, a new prop account and they go straight in full clip and they haven't got any setup there. They've got nothing there, you know, you got to take its time. And, and this is why I like what uh, Afshan is doing. You know, he's not letting us, uh, you know, take over and get into his head. He's Influence. staying to, true yeah. to him. From what he's doing, Actually, this is, is really not good. also my type of trading. Like, it's not how I trade, that's why. Yeah, uh, I respect you for giving it a go. While Alex was talking there, I've just had I was going to do a countdown, but no one's got any open positions, so um, <laughs> I just had a, a little ring in my ear to say that the 60 seconds, 60 minutes is up. So dun, dun, dun. we're going to start with you, Afshan. Can you let us know your PNL from the 60 minutes? <laughs> we should get a bell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm down uh, around uh, $970. $970. And Victor? I am down $553 and $31. So we got a victor, a victor in 60 minutes. <laughs> Both <laughs> traders finishing in drawdown. That's the first time that's happened with us. Both traders losing, but just losing that little bit less. Victor's going to scrape through to the next round. How's it feel, Victor? As a victor. As a victor. <laughs> He's playing the game. He's playing the game. Afshan, I know it's uncomfortable, isn't it? Uh, it's your first time it's here. Hard, it's we hard know to do. we've been doing it a little while now it's it is an uncomfortable time constraint market and you're chatting and looking at the person you are trading against it's a completely different environment how did you find it uh, it was a different or uh, definitely a different experience and uh, i learned a lot of, a lot from it uh, how did you, en did you <laughs> enjoy it did you enjoy the experience as well yeah i definitely enjoyed the experience like 
I was not uh, like I wasn't here for uh, to win or lose. I was just here for the experience. Amazing. That's what I love. Well, I you love just got it. to listen to us talk about poker for about yeah, yeah, yeah. totally, <laughs> totally. I was just listening to you guys, and I was looking at my positions all that. Amazing. That's stuff. part of it. That's part of it. Excellent stuff. Well done, Victor. Congratulations to you guys. Make sure you join us next week where we're going to do it all again to see who can reign champion in season one. We'll like and subscribe. Time. Hey guys, Jordan here. Just wanted to send you a personal little thank you for sticking around and watching us here at Trade Delicious. If you did enjoy the content, consider subscribing. Everything we do here is completely free. And of course, we have some other video suggestions here which you might love. We will see you in the next video.